Is it better to be part of a pack or a lone wolf? That is a question many animals have had to answer for themselves over generations. Living in a group or living alone can have its advantages and disadvantages. Today, we're gonna to look at this special adaptation and the pros and cons of it. An adaptation is a characteristic an animal has that helps them survive in their environment. While adaptations in animals are as diverse as the animal kingdom itself, Adaptations fall under two main categories, behavioral adaptations and structural adaptations. Let's take a look at Ranger Russell, our resident box turtle, for some examples. A structural adaptation is something that is physically on an animal's body that helps them be better able to survive in their environment. For Russell, one of his structural adaptations is his shell. His shell is very hard, so it protects him from being eaten and also it's colored in a certain way so that it helps him camouflage with his environment. Russell also has a special hinge shell, which means when a predator comes along, he is able to take his arms, his legs, and his head inside his shell and close it up completely so that a predator cannot get in to the softer parts of his body. His shell and all the cool things that come along with his shell are all part of his body, which means those are structural adaptations. A behavioral adaptation is one where the animal acts or behaves in a certain way that helps them survive in their environment. A behavioral adaptation box turtles have is that they will only explore territory about the size of a football field and live in that same space for the rest of their life. They make a mental map of their territory and know where to get all the best things. If they are taken out of this territory, they will spend their entire life getting back to it and might even risk their lives. That's why it's so important not to take box turtles out of their habitat. These behaviors have nothing to do with what is on the turtle's body, but rather how it acts, which makes them behavioral adaptations. Have you ever found an animal living in the wild and noticed they're either living in big groups or alone? Some animals like bees, ants, and fish live in big groups while other animals, like deer and raccoon, live in small family groups. And then there are some animals that live completely alone, like turtles and squirrels. Well, all these animals have adapted to either living in groups or living alone to help them better able to survive in their environment. Groups of animals can be small, like a family of raccoons, or large, like bees living in a hive. Either way, living in a group can provide specific advantages that allow many animals to be better able to survive in their environment. These advantages include collectively gathering or hunting food and sharing it with the group. If an animal lives in a group, there are more bodies that can help with getting food. This means that they could potentially get more food or take down bigger prey than they would have gotten working alone. Groups of animals are also able to assign each member a job that helps the group survive. When each member of the group has a task, everything gets done. The meerkats in this video all take turns having different jobs. Here you can see one is taking care of the young, while all these meerkats are looking for the food. And finally, the lone one standing up is the lookout and will sound the alarm to the others if there is a threat in the area. It is easier to find a mate if you live in a group, because obviously there are a lot of your same species hanging around all the time. A solo animal must rely on chance to come across a mate. This might mean that solo animals have a harder time producing offspring than those that live in a group. Another advantage of living in a group is defense against predators. Many animals have special defense mechanisms that are only made possible because of their large numbers. The birds you see here are starlings, and these incredible displays are called murmurations. They happen when these birds get together, sometimes with numbers into the thousands, to keep warm during the winter. Why they fly like this have puzzled scientists for years, but the leading explanation is that the swirling masses create confusion for predators, which prevents a single individual from being targeted. More animals in a group means more eyes on the lookout for predators, more attackers to protect the group, and more bodies to protect the young. These white-tailed deer move their tails in certain patterns to communicate with the group without making a sound. That way, if one deer sees something, he can alert the others without giving up their location. 
Lastly, members of a group have an easier time sharing information and learning new things from one another. Elder members of elephants will remember all the locations of the watering holes they've been to in their lifetime and pass it down to younger generations. Finding fresh water during the dry season in Africa is a matter of life or death, so having a catalog of options is important to survival. So, as a review, the advantages of living in a group are sharing food and hunting as a team, division of labor, ease of finding mates, group defense against predators, and sharing information. Now let's look at some real life examples of animals living in groups and how it helps them survive in their environment. Have you ever noticed the way geese fly in a V formation? Geese work as a team to save energy while migrating to their summer homes. Each goose flies slightly above the goose in front of them. This reduces their wind resistance and conserves energy. The more experienced geese take turns being at the front of the V formation, since this is the job that has the most wind resistance and takes the most energy. When the goose in the front gets tired, it will switch out and take a break. In this way, geese can fly for long distances without having to stop. Individuals in a school of fish rely on two strategies to stay safe. The first one is called the dilution effect, which means that the chance of an individual being caught is smaller in a group than it is if they were alone. If they are in a large group, there is a better chance that their neighbor will get caught and not them. The second thing they rely on is called the confusion effect. They have found that predators find it confusing to focus on one target when there are a lot of other moving targets. Predators cannot seem to choose an individual in a large group. This confusion is good for the little guys. Honeybees work together in highly organized communities within their beehive. A honeybee colony is called a superorganism because the survival of the entire colony depends on the coordinated actions of the individuals. Each bee has a specific job, and working together, they are able to build a hive, raise young, collect food, and even regulate the temperature of the hive, but none of them could do it alone. Honeybees are divided into three roles, the worker bees, the drones, and the queen. Most of the colony is made up of worker bees, which are underdeveloped females who are responsible for pretty much everything. There is one queen bee in a hive at a time, and her job is to lay the eggs. Drones are male bees that have the simple task of mating with the queen bees. They are only allowed in the hive in spring and summer, but when winter sets in and resources are scarce, the drones are forced out and left to die. You may have already begun to see this, but living in a group is not always sunshine and rainbows. Here are some advantages of living solo. First, there is less competition for food, space, and mates when an animal lives alone because they don't have to share with those around them. Although all the responsibility relies on the individual to find everything it needs to survive, it also means that when the going gets rough and there is less resources, there is no chance of being pushed out of the group like the drone honeybees in the last example. Increased competition for mates is also an issue animals must overcome when living in a group. This can lead to violent displays of dominance between males. This isn't usually the case if you live alone. Another advantage is that if an animal lives alone, they are probably more flexible. They are better able to change territories, food sources, or other ways of living quickly if need be. If an animal is solo, there is not a group that it needs to consult, and nobody else it needs to convince. Therefore, if it wants to do something, it can. A big pro of living alone is not getting sick as often. If you live in a big group, diseases and viruses can easily spread and infect the whole group. But this is not the case if you live solo. As humans, we live together in large communities. This is why we are asked to quarantine and socially distance during COVID-19, so that we can slow the spread of the disease. Lastly, big groups can be obvious to predators. However, if you live alone, you are usually able to fly under the radar and avoid detection. So, as a review, advantages of living alone are less competition for food, space, and mates, more flexibility, less spread of infectious diseases, and less conspicuous to predators. So there you have it. You now know some of the advantages and disadvantages of living in a group. Now that you know, I would be curious to know what you would rather be, a member of a pack 
or a lone wolf. I hope that when you go outside, you take notice of animals that are living alone and some that are living in groups. And think about some of the exact advantages or disadvantages they're getting from being that way. See you next time.